Hey, what's going on everybody, and welcome back to another Ready or Not video. Before we get started, I'd like to shout out my partnership, Buy Games Cheaper with Instant Gaming. The affiliate link will be down below in the description if you guys want to check that out. In this Ready or Not video, we're going to be checking out a brand new mod. This is Advanced Armory, and it is the upgraded version of the Attachments Library mod that we showed off in a previous video. The mod allows you to customize your firearms from an expansive selection of high-quality modifications. Now, unfortunately, just like with the Attachments Library mod, we showed off. This mod only works for this specific custom Mark 18 that is included with the mod download. Now, honestly, I am a huge fan of the Mark 18 and I guess any M4 variant for that matter. And having the ability to utilize this level of customization is just incredible to me. So we're going to be taking a look at what all is included with this vast modification. We're looking at a total of 86 attachments that you can select and customize to your liking. There are 31 optics, 12 muzzle devices, 6 grips, 18 total stock types, 6 different handguards, and 13 magazine types. We've talked about it previously and a lot of people agree this is a level of customization that should have been a vision for Void Interactive with Ready or Not. I know there are so many of us that are a huge fan of highly modular and customizable firearms. A system like this for all firearms in the game would be an absolute dream. Let's go ahead and take a look at this mod and see what we can come up with in game. All right, we just loaded in here. We're going to get into it, checking out this mod. Now, one thing I'm going to throw out there, and I know this was something we talked about with the attachments library mod, and I think we pretty much have the same concept here, but Gunfighter does seem to be working fine with this mod. Now, the only thing, and this is what we brought up in the previous video, is that the view model change, I think, is default with this firearm. However, every other Gunfighter feature should be working fine, as far as I know. I haven't run into any accessibility issues or anything crazy like that. If you notice something, throw it down in the comments so we can maybe get it addressed. Um, but it's working good for me. All right, so getting into it here, we got the Daniel Defense DDM4. Now, this is a supposedly a 300 blackout. Now, the rifle that I was running previously was pretty much very similar to this one. I don't believe it was a 300 blackout variant, but they all look fairly similar right um now running a daniel defense previously it looked <laughs> again very similar to this so i'm technically just throwing on you know additional customizable attachments that i wouldn't be able to previously so this is you know absolutely awesome for me because i love the look of the daniel defense m4 so when I'm setting up my M4 and I might be, you know, unfortunately, I'm not 100% educated when it comes to a lot of the functionalities of actual rifles. I think I do pretty good with terminology and stuff like that. Uh, but for the most part, I might mess up some things here and there. So it's going to happen. But either way, so I've got my personal preference. A lot of other people do as well. I really enjoy the EOTex, the XPS3. Um, as far as the differences here, I don't know what the major differences are. We can kind of go through them and see. Um, but we've got like different colors. I think I think it's just like the color of it here. So we've got um, a tan, and then this is going to be a green reticle for this one. I'm not really sure what the differences are on these ones here. But again, we can look and see. I really enjoy the XPS. Uh, EOTech down here would be, would be pretty cool too, I would believe. Uh, this looks like the ones that like are like a little bit cheaper that like law enforcement would use. But let's start out with this one and see how that one works and we can look at the other ones. Now, I don't mind running suppressors. I, I enjoy running suppressor, suppressors, but I also enjoy running unsuppressed. Um, now, as far as these muzzles go, I think this is just for different types of, um, I guess, handguard or barrel. Yeah, barrel setups. So we've got the 10.5 inch barrel. We got the 14.5 inch barrel here. Um, so we'll have to come back to this so that we can properly throw the correct type of muzzle on there. Um, so let's start out here. We So we already got our optic. Let's go down to the handguard setup here. So we've got the different types of lengths of barrels. We can do a 10.3 if we're trying to do super CQC. And I do really enjoy running a CQC setup with a Mark 18. However, as far as this particular handguard goes, I'm not a huge fan of this one. I really like the basic setup Mark 18 handguard setup right here. 
That looks phenomenal. So we've got a black and we've got what looks to be kind of like a brownish, a tannish looking color. So we're going to go with the black. I really like how that works. And again, you'll see we've got the muzzle device here. It's kind of floating, so we're going to have to fix that. I think that works. Yeah, so we got to make sure we match up the the uh, the muzzle device with the correct muzzle. So 10.5. Yeah, so either of these ones should work. I don't really know what the differences are on these ones. Um, if we wanted to, we could throw a can on it. Like I said, I like running, I like running a can, um, but I also don't mind running it, you know, unsuppressed. I think, I think unsuppressed sounds really cool. So I like to do both. Um, let's quickly do a stock. So as far as a stock setup, I'm not really, I don't really know what the major differences are between the stock. Some of these look kind of goofy to me. I really like this one right here. This looks like a basic stock. I like the way this one looks. I think we'll go with that one. The Magpul CTR Carbine. Um, I think we passed up. So we passed up the overbarrel, the, the muzzle device. So one thing you do need to keep in mind here is if we want to run a flashlight, we can run the basic flashlight, which I think if we close out of here, I think it still displays on our firearm, right? It does. So as you can see on the right there, we've got a little tack light, and I I enjoy running the tack light more than the lasers. Uh, reasons for that is uh, we've talked about it in other videos. I just I enjoy the ability to have a white light when needed. Um, in real life, you can use uh, different types of devices regardless. Like obviously, you're not going to have limitations like you do in Ready or Not. Switch Illuminator supposedly no longer works. I really want to get that mod back. But Switch Illuminator mod allowed you to use a laser device and a flashlight, which was phenomenal. Um, but we've got all these different types of lasers. We've got a L3 Harris, which I've never actually heard of that one before, but that one looks pretty cool. Um, I know LAPD, they use the, the PEC 13s, I think. Or no, I think they run D-Ball. Is there a D-Ball on here? I don't think there is. But as you can see, there's different colors. So if we run this one here, which is black and it fits our aesthetic, we can have a green laser. Um, it would be cool if we could have a black version of this one, the PEC-15. Oh, I see. So it, it kind of hangs off. Okay, so that's not going to work because that's going to be for a different type of handguard platform, a, a larger barrel. So let's do... So which color is this one here? This one's also green. That one looks cool, too. So we can choose between a couple different ones here. I kind of like the way this one looks, too. This diner. Yeah, this is the D-Ball right here I was talking about. So supposedly LAPD SWAT uses D-Balls, but they, they could be using something else now. Um, both of them look really cool, to be honest with you. I really like the way these ones look. Um... And the other thing we have here that we can select is a magazine type. Now, as far as magazine types go in real life, I know it's obviously personal preference, but I don't really know what the the major differences are and, you know, what what the you know, what's better, you know, running the Magpul PMAG or just a basic like Stanag magazine and all that. I don't to be honest with you, I have no idea what the major differences are, probably quality, durability, stuff like that. Um Maybe it's lighter, maybe it's heavier. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. I would love to know. That's something I should look into. Um, but as you can see, uh, other than cosmetics here, excuse me, other than cosmetics, uh, we do have some magazines that increase the magazine size. So if I wanted to do a 60 dr round drum, I could, or I could do the Stanag 60 rounder as well, which that thing looks massive. I actually just want to see what this looks like. Let's do, and we did see this with attachments library. And I know it kind of, uh, yeah, your guy kind of handles it a little weird. That's funny. I want to do this one right here so I can shoot the little targets on the side. So the only thing is we might need to get a riser for our EOTech. Um, mostly due to the fact that our sight picture is slightly obstructed by the laser device on our handguard. I also noticed this bothers me a little bit is our thumb is going through the laser device 
That kind of bothers me. I'd probably swap to just a flashlight setup then, so we don't have that intrusion there. Oops. That was really bad. It's not bad. So we've got a, a 60 round drum mag here. Wow. I don't think I'd ever actually want to opt into using a 60 round drum. That's crazy. This barrel would be running hot right now after running all those rounds through it. So let's make a couple modifications real quick. So we know the drum mag, it's obviously not something that I would personally choose. Um, this P mag looks pretty nice. Looks like we got we got a, or a G pole. Sorry. Well, no, that is a P mag. My bad. And then down here we've got what looks to be like a 40 round magazine. So we could do a 40 rounder. Um, they've got all these different fancy. There's a Daniel Defense magazine. Maybe we should just go with the Daniel Defense mag because it kind of fits the aesthetic of our rifle. So what I was talking about is our thumb was kind of obstructing the laser device. Maybe we should try this one and see if our thumb uh, still obstructs it. I don't. I think it probably will. Uh, let's see. I I do like the look of this one because it's black. I like that one. Um. So we need to try to find um, an EOTech that kind of has, it's a little bit high, I think this one's a little higher here, the XPS2. Right, so there's a riser, there we go. So there's a riser on this one here, EOTech XPS3 with a Unity riser. So let's see how this one looks. It does look a little goofy, just like looking at it, the way that it's set up. However, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go ahead and send that back down. However, you'll notice, even though it does look a little goofy with the riser, we do know we no longer have that obstruction with our sight picture here. So we don't have to worry about that. That is really good to have. And if we... Yep, so our thumb is still obstructing. Yeah, the riser looks a little goofy, but it is going to keep us from um, our side picture being obstructed. But I don't like the way it looks with my thumb <laughs> going through it. And this is me just being really nitpicky. So I'm going to go back to just running the tack light only so we don't have a laser device. And, uh, so we had the XPS-3. Let's see what the XPS-2 looks like with the green instead of the red. I think that could look interesting. Yeah, so far, I mean, I, I just, I love the ability here to just be able to change out how, you know, we want our gun to look. So look how, look how more, like, realistic that looks without the laser device, you know, covering up our thumb and everything when we go into high ready. I guess if it was really, like, if you really wanted to run a laser, you just have an extended barrel, uh, choose a different handguard, and I think there's a few where you can put the laser device further down, or you can just do low ready so you don't, so you don't really see that. This looks pretty nice. This actually looks really nice. Now, I don't know if I would run this with an NVG setup. I feel like this is ob obstructing the, um... I can't, this is probably a bad representation. We'd have to go downstairs to really test it. But I probably wouldn't run the green with the NVGs. And I usually always have NVGs on me when I play. As far as sight picture goes, and like just everything about this, it looks really, really nice. The EOTech itself is, is very high quality. Um... I really like this. Now, really quickly, before we close things up, um, before we close out of uh, wrapping up the video here, I want to kind of show you guys what I was telling you about just a second ago. So if we go through here and we change up to a larger handguard and barrel type. So this one's tan, this one's black. Okay, we got a, we got a, um, a front sight on this one for some reason. So let's do this with a suppressor. 
So, obviously, our weapon platform is so much larger now, which for CQC, that might be an issue. Um, and what we can do is now we can throw a one of these. So, see how these ones down here, this one right here in particular we were looking at? I think that might be too. Yeah, it's protruding with the... Uh, so let's let's do this instead. There we go. So no, now it's no longer protruding with the front sight there that was on the last handguard that we threw on. So now we've got a laser device. Um, we might need to do a riser for this one too for our EOTech. The Unity riser. This is, that's a huge riser there. I don't even know what that's for. That's a special, that's a fancy looking optic. So we might just have to do this one here with the little riser on it so we don't get obstructed. Let's see what this looks like really quick. So we've got the larger barrel. We've got the different type of hand, the larger handguard that fits on the larger barrel. I didn't mean to do that again. <laughs> So we're not being obstructed with the laser device. When we go into high ready, look, our thumb is not protruding onto the laser device because it's a larger uh, weapon platform. Looks really nice. We've got the red dot instead of the green, which I like the green better. You can really tell too that the recoil difference running gunfighter is just so nice. The game, by default, just has some incredible recoil for some reason. Just crazy recoil. But, um, that is... That is awesome. Now, again, I would... I would probably prefer to run what we were running previously with the tack light instead of the laser. Very personal preference here, but the fact that we have the ability to change things around like this is just incredible. This is an absolute must-have modification. Let me know what you guys think down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much, and we will see you in the next one.